Hi class, this is Laura Klein, and I am going to do for you a close reading of Smborska's photographs from September 11th. I want to give you an example of how I do close reading, but I want to do it with a poem that you won't be writing about for your paper, but that you've all read. So that's why I chose this poem. And the first thing I do when I want to do a close reading is I print out the poem, and I spend a lot of time looking at it line by line and taking detailed notes on the poem. And then I try to spend some time away from it, come back to it, and then maybe some of the things that were at first just unclear to me, I can make a little more sense of. So I'm going to go through the poem line by line and talk about what I thought as I was reading it, and then how I sort of came to a place where I could start to write a thesis. So the first thing you always want to look at is the title, and this title is photographed from September 11th, and the immediate thing that comes to mind for me is that this is not a photograph, it's a poem. And so that's going to bring up for me ideas about what the difference bet is between a photograph and a poem, and maybe that's an important thing to think about in the reading of this poem. So the first stanza, they jumped from the burning floors, one, two, a few more, higher, lower, is seems to be a fairly straightforward description of what's happening in the photograph, right? We can assume that the they, the subject of the poem, is the people in the photograph. And if we know the context of this poem or the context of this event, we know that there are photographs of people jumping from buildings during September 11th. And that this is likely based on those photographs. And this does seem to be a straightforward description. The only thing I notice about this stanza is the way that the lines slant down. And the down slant of them imitates the motion of falling. So the actual body of the, of the poem itself shows, shows the action of falling. The second stanza, the photograph halted them in life and now keeps them above the earth, toward the earth. This is no longer a description of what's in the photograph, but a description of what the photograph does. And it halts them in life. And this is a super important part of this poem, right? And what I notice most about this stanza is in the third line, there's repetition. And there hasn't been too much repetition so far. Now it's a very short poem. But repetition always stands out in a poem. And I see it as significant. And what's being repeated is the earth. And what comes before it is a preposition. So what I ask myself is, why are these two prepositions being juxtaposed, above and toward? So I want to think about the meaning of those two specific words. And above is kind of static, right? If something, if I'm sitting above the balcony or, you know, something is above my desk, it's sort of suspended there in time. It's above. Toward implies movement. I'm moving towards something. And whether that's falling toward the ground, which would be the description in this poem, or, you know, moving toward the future, another implication in this poem, there's movement. And these two things are being juxtaposed because this is, in essence, one of the tensions in the poem, right, is that the photograph does halt them in life, but they aren't really halted in life. So the poem is doing double duty in that it's describing the photograph that that is keeping them above the ground, but also sort of acknowledging the event and describing the event in which they're they're moving toward the ground. And the next stanza, each is still complete with a particular face and blood well hidden. This is moving to describe the subjects, again going back to describing the photograph. And the word that really stands out to me in the stanza is the word particular, and I thought it was an odd description of a face. We don't usually use that word to describe a face, so I wanted to think really specifically about the different meanings of that word, so I looked it up in the dictionary, and I wanted to see if there were a number of meanings. The first meaning is the one that I had thought of, which is pertaining to a singular specific person. A particular face means a specific face. And um, there are also two other meanings that seem pertinent to this poem. The first one is that pertinent or particular means immediately present. And this goes back to what I was talking about in the previous stanza. The photograph, although this is an event that happened in the past, if we look at the, that photograph, it brings these people into the immediate present, right? It makes them alive again in that moment, in that photograph, whenever someone looks at it. It makes them immediately present, their particular face, their present face. And then the other meaning was distinguished from others. And to me, this, again, 
brought a grim image that implied what is going to happen at, after this poem is over, right, in the final line. And I'm really jumping forward there, but also what's going to happen after the photograph is taken is because there is movement and the photograph has halted them in life, but it won't last forever. And they will become not distinguishable as they join all, the group of, of the other, you know, people who lost their lives in this tragedy of September 11th. And then the third line, we get a really specific grim image where it says blood well hidden, because it's suggesting that eventually the it will no longer be well hidden. And well hidden is, you know, behind the skin um, in the body. The body is complete. And that stanza, again, with this idea of completeness is talking about what's happening in the photograph. All of all of the people in the photograph are still complete. And there's a suggestion of what will happen afterwards. And I'm noticing this pattern in the stanzas, right? That there's this tension between these two things. The next stanza is the only one that has four lines in the entire poem. And it seems to be going through some details. It seems to be expanding time. It's expanding time literally in the sense of the poem in that it takes more time, more space on the page, but also is bringing in the element of time to talk to us about how the photograph expands time and how the photograph allows for the, um, the people, for us to see the details, the, the small things like the change or hair coming loose. The second to last stanza in the poem goes back to three lines, and it is one of the most baffling, or at least in my first read it was, of the whole poem. I just couldn't quite get a grasp on the language of the stanza, so I needed to take some time away from it and come back and look at it again. So the first line, they're still within the air's reach, made me think, well, where is not within the air's reach? If we think about air, air is everywhere, right? And then, again, it suggests that the rubble, the rubble is not within the air's reach, and the rubble is suffocating, in fact. And so that image, with what seems like very simple language, is actually very grim. And the second two lines were the ones that really baffled me, within the compass of places that have just now opened. And I had to take some time away from those and think about what what just now opened means. So what happened in September on September 11th, um, the things that were opening was the building itself was opening and the windows that the people were jumping from were opening. And so those are the places just now opened and within the compass. And I had to look up compass because I kept thinking of a compass like that shows you directions on a camping trip and that was not right. So uh, it, it just, that just didn't seem to make the most sense in the context of the poem. So I looked it up again and realized that a second meaning of compass is the perimeter. So sort of within the perimeter of those places that have just now opened, they're still close to the top, they're still above. And this relates back to the other images in the poem. Now the last line brings in a new character. It begins with I. And since it's introducing a new subject, we have to ask ourselves, well, who is the subject? I think because of the reading of the poem that I'm performing and also the rest of the stanza that we can assume in this case, but not every case, that the speaker here, the I, is the poet or a poet. Talking about what a poet can do for people who have suffered such a terrible tragedy. And one of those things is to describe this flight. So the description of the, the flight in the poem makes the poem like a photograph. It's doing the same thing for the people that the photograph does. The poem is halting them in life. And I think sometimes we think with elegy or um, memorialization of any kind, the words keeping them alive, but not really that, but halting them in life, giving a moment of where we can remember and slow time, just like the photograph does. The poem is doing the same thing. And then the last part is, and not add a last line. And that just brings us back to all of the lines, all of the things that are unsaid in this poem, all of the things that are implied and unsaid in this poem. And that becomes metaphorical, right? Um, the last line. The last line is obviously a comparison to what happens after. What happens after the photograph is like the last line of the poem. The poem does have a last line, but it's that 
that part that's understood but unsaid that the poem is really about. It's about all the white space in the poem, about all the things that are implied and not said. And so in the end, what I what I came to as a conclusion is that this poem is really making a comment on what poetry can do, and we call that metapoetical. And it's about how poetry can memorialize, how art can memorialize, and how the poem becomes like the photograph, and that it keeps, it keeps something still and gives something more time. And if I were going to write a thesis about this poem, I would work on talking about that and talking about how the poem illustrates it by using the tension between the stillness of the moment, of the memorial, and the tragedy of the event. And I would go back and take those places like above and toward or the word particular that really illustrate that. And I would work on creating an argument from that. So hopefully that's helpful. And if you have any questions as you're working on your own close readings of poems, please send me an email and I'll talk to you soon.